Earlier this spring, the Adams County Museum was restoring this sugar beet wagon, and they called and requested that I would bend the fellows for two of the wheels, one front and one back. They needed to be two and a quarter inches thick and three inches wide. And I had some air dried red oak on hand that was just right to fill the bill. So I very lightly planed one side that would be the interior of the bend that would go up against the spokes themselves, and I left the other side unplaned that will go up against the face of the tire. And then I'm going to put a small T on this plane side just to help me remember what's the top side when I pull them out of the steamer and go into the bending form. And then I mark the cut lengths on the end of each piece. And I cut my links anywhere from 6 to 8 inches long on each end to make sure the ends come into a curve and don't remain straight. Now since this lumber is air dried, it's not kiln dried, I'm going to put it in the steamer under pressure for 1 hour per inch thick. So these are going to be in here for 2 and a quarter to 2 and a half hours to get them bendable. Then I have forms made for multiple different sizes of my wagon bows and front weight wheel fellows. So I'm going to pick out my two sizes that I need for these. 36 for the rears and then I'll use a 30 for the front. Now the banding I'm going to use is 8 inch thick mild steel, this is 6 inches wide and 8 feet long. I have quarter by 2 angle iron welded on each end with loops that will accommodate the hooks off of my cables. Now I'm going to be bending two 3 inch wide 2 and a quarter inch thick pieces of oak. This is why I have this, this bending press reduced down 1800 to 1 to get this accomplished. So with my band at 8 feet, and this particular set of fellows only at 78, I have an assortment of blocks that I can make up the difference. So adding this 9 inches, in addition to the 7.5, 8 inches that my fellows are too long initially, gives me the added leverage to make these ends of the fellows come around into a curve like they need to be. Now when bending heavy wood like this, it takes quite a while for the moisture and the heat to come out. So even though I've speeded this up, it makes you think like I'm in a big hurry. But it's not really a time crunch thing, even though you don't want to dawdle either.
Now just like you've watched in my other videos, keeping wood contained so that it does not stretch, but everything goes into compression, making sure the ends are securely fastened down is a big factor in whether this works or not. Now while you listen to this bending, every once in a while you'll hear a little pop, pop once in a while. Well it's not the wood that's giving, it's the cable as it's winding on to the winch in the back as it kind of jumps from cable into a hole. So that's what you hear when you hear these little snapping pop sounds. Now this last little bit is actually the hardest part of the bend. Is to get these short little ends to come around into a curve instead of remaining straight. That's where the, the extra pieces make a big difference. You really need that leverage to get her done. So even these two fellows are sawn to three inch widths, bending two at a time, we're bending six inches wide by two and a quarter inches thick. Now when you've watched me bend sheep wagon bows, wagon bows, and even some of these coach top bows, you've noticed that they had a lot of spring to them. But the material there was five eighths, three quarter or maybe one inch thick. But these being two and a quarter inches thick, there's that much more fiber in the wood that has been upset in the bending process. Therefore the spring back is reduced also. And because of the extra thickness, I also allow more time on the form. So these I've left in overnight, maybe 24 hours, so they are fully cooled down and then I'm just going to pull them into the size I need, tack a strip across the ends and then let them dry. So these are a 40 inch overall outside diameter set of fellows for the rear wheels. Well now I need to bend the front wheels and they're going to be 34 inch. Well naturally because of the smaller form and still just as thick and heavy a fellows, the bend is going to be a little more difficult. But if we hold true to the principles of bending, keep everything contained, we can still get it done. So I'm going to make a few adjustments on my bending press because I'm going to position this a little bit different. My band is still going to be the 8 foot, but my wood is shorter, so my end pieces are going to be longer. The factors are just a little different.
Now there's always a few little odd factors here and there. And this one shows up that I have about a quarter inch I need to accommodate. So I have my little eighth inch straps. I'm going to put one on each end and take up the difference. Another little thing I'm going to do different is I'm going to give some support to this top pulley frame. When the, when the fellows start to get toward the top, the pressure really gets to be exaggerated. And in bending this heavy wood, I have had this top frame give away. So now I reinforce it so that doesn't happen. And since I have this top pulley frame on a slide so it's adjustable, it's this slide that has given away in the past. So anyone that builds wheels for very long soon finds out that it's the small wheels that are the most difficult because they have the least flex. And it's the same with bending the wood. It's the small diameters that are difficult to bend. And having to do this real tight fit, in fact I arch it and kind of snap it into place, is really beneficial because then I know I have a tight end pressure and that's going to help immensely so that this doesn't give away. Now the first piece out of the steamer actually bowed a little sideways. So I'm going to pull them in straight and then I'll use the down pressure of the form to actually hold them in place for the bend. There's one of those snaps as the cable is winding up onto the cable spool. On this tighter band, having the extra long leverage on the ends really is beneficial to getting these ends to come into place. Once again, this is the hardest part of the whole bend. But, once again, it can be done.
And since it was even a tighter bend than the previous fellows, you'll notice when I release the pressure, this springs back even less. Now this black that you see on the outside is because of the, the steel band in contact with the oak. The oak has a tannic acid in it and when it comes in contact with metal it turns the oak black. But this is the part that's going to be under the tire so it's really not a big deal. Well, this was kind of the easy part. It's a lot more difficult sticking them together. But the Adams County Museum did a good job. You get in the area, stop by and look them up. Once again, thanks for watching.